Let's say we're given the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals z squared over c squared, where a, b, and c are all constants within the real numbers. And x, y, and z are our variables. Now let's say you want to try and draw the graph of this function in x, y, z. Well, how can we begin to analyze it? So one thing we can do is to look at its traces. And when I say traces, what I really mean is we set one variable, let's say z, and to what we call a constant, I'll express it in terms of kc. And we want to see what happens to our original equation once we have this new definition. So let's say that k is equal to 1, in which case we have z is equal to c. Then our equation, our original equation, now becomes x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to c squared over c squared, which is just 1. So now we get the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And we can realize that this is actually the equation of an ellipse. So if we draw x and y, we can say, for example, that if y, b is bigger than a, so we have positive b, negative b, since it divides y, and positive a, negative a, since it divides x. And we can see that this makes sense. We plug in positive plus or minus a, we get a squared over a squared, which is just 1, plus y squared over b squared equals 1, which requires that y is equal to 0. So we can see that at plus or minus a for x, it has to be on the x-axis. But what does it mean now that we've plugged in z is equal to c? It means that this ellipse is actually at some height along the z-axis where the height is going to be c. So if we draw that in a th three-dimensional plane, three-dimensional space, let's first draw the axes. We have x, we have y, and we have z. And let's say this is some height z is equal to c. If I draw out what the xy plane would look like when brought up to a height of c, then we know that it's going to, we're going to have our ellipse something like this. So along the y-axis, we have negative b and positive b. And along the x-axis, we have positive a and negative a. And this is all, the ellipse, the whole plane, is parallel to the xyz plane, and it's all at some height z is equal to c. And we can keep analyzing this function just by seeing what happens as k varies. Another thing we can do is to look at some of the other traces. So another thing we can consider is saying we can let, for example, y is equaling to 0. In which case we would get x squared over a squared is equal to z squared over c squared. And what this gives us actually is just going to be a pair of lines. So we, if we draw x and z, we're going to get something that looks like this. Because if we take the square root of it, we will we will realize that we'll get kind of two situations. So we can have x over a is equal to z over c, or negative x over a is equal to negative z over c. And these two are the same equation, but we can also get an equa the equations negative x over a is equal to positive z over c, or x over a is equal to negative z over c. And so we have two distinct equations, which gives us two distinct lines. So we have, for example, positive slope and negative slope. And what that looks like is if we go back to our third three-dimensional drawing, uh, when we look at x and z, namely these two lines, we can draw out our slanted lines. And imagine they're in the x, y, z plane. And they're going to look something like this. And if we do a similar analysis for when x equals 0, we'll find we'll also get some lines. 
so that will look like this perhaps and if we continue this kind of analysis we'll realize that what we're really getting is actually a cone and when we draw these out we're getting when we draw out these kinds of traces we're getting the slanted lines out right along the surface of the cone and when we're looking at these kinds of traces we're looking it's as if we're slicing the cone horizontally like such to get many traces of ellipses and if we choose another one when x and y do not equal zero but rather the traces when they equal something else then it's equivalent to cutting it vertically and we will realize we'll get something that looks like a hyperbola so along these lines and so that's really the different kinds of ways we can analyze uh, an equation of this form in order to realize and draw the graph of it being a cone so this is a cone 